Well, the summit's being seen as a major step towards reviving talks with the U.S. over Pyongyang's nuclear program. Philip Awira has more. A sign of commitment, the leaders of North and South Korea met in Pyongyang at a summit with a lot riding on it, and they delivered with an agreement. South Korean President Moon Jae-in said that for the first time, the two countries agreed on a specific step towards North Korea's denuclearization. North Korea has agreed to permanently dismantle the Dongchang-ri missile engine test site and launch pads in the presence of international experts. Also, North Korea has agreed to take additional measures, such as dismantling the Nyongbyong nuclear facility, if there are corresponding measures from the U.S. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said he and Moon are serious about reducing tensions on the Korean peninsula. We have signed a military agreement to end the history of tragic conflict and hostility that has existed for decades. We have also promised to make the Korean peninsula the land of peace without nuclear weapons and threats. Some analysts say the South Korean leader is betting his political reputation on the sincerity of his northern counterpart. But the agreement could take off some of the pressure Moon was feeling from the U.S. to mediate the nuclear dispute. Washington has been pushing North Korea to make a firm commitment to denuclearize. The U.S. demand includes submitting a full list of its nuclear weapons and facilities, as well as stopping all its nuclear activities. This is the first time in 10 years that a South Korean leader has visited Pyongyang, but it's the third time Kim and Moon have met this year. Besides discussing matters of security, they are working on cementing cultural ties. Both countries agreed to allow more reunions of families separated by the Korean War and to host the 2032 Summer Olympics together. Kim says he hopes to visit the South soon. If that happens, it will be the first time a North Korean leader has visited Seoul and it will provide hope that peace might finally come between two neighbors nearly 70 years after war broke out. Philip Puwira, TRT World. And U.S. President Donald Trump has praised the developments in Pyongyang. Uh, we're making tremendous progress with respect to North Korea. Prior to becoming president, it looked like we were going to war with North Korea. And now we have uh, a lot of progress. We've gotten our prisoners back. Uh, we're getting our remains back. They continue to come in. A lot of tremendous things, but very importantly, no missile testing, no nuclear testing. Now they want to go and put a, a bid in for the Olympics. No, we have a lot of very good things going. Well, Professor Hazel Smith is a research associate with the North Korean Center at SOAS University and author of the book North Korea Markets and Military Rule. She joins us now live from Sheffield. Hazel, good to have you with us. So President Trump there saying that these developments are all very exciting. What's your analysis? Do you see the pledges made by Kim at this summit as concrete progress? Well, we certainly have seen concrete process. In fact, President Trump's right to say that since all these uh, discussions have taken place over the last six months. We have already seen concrete process, uh, progress. We've seen the American prisoners returned. We've seen the suspension of nuclear tests, the suspension of rocket launches. And I think what's got hidden in the news today is a very, very significant concrete step, which is the militaries of North Korea and, signed, and South Korea have signed a deal to establish a maritime ground and air buffer zone. Now, that's really, really important because over the years of division, all the military clashes have started on these, in these border areas and have escalated. Now, if this agreement holds up, and it's the first of its type, and it's substantive because it's not just a political agreement between leaders, but between the militaries, that's really a concrete step in de-escalating tensions. It's particularly important for South Korea, which, of course, on, is the border nation with North Korea and North Korea, who actually see the people being killed when there is a, an outbreak of tension. So that's a really concrete step forward. And in fact, the, the, both the leaders have committed to uh, an era of peace and, uh, and announced steps to deepen bilateral ties. So how do you see this relationship progressing? Do you think that we are now moving towards unification of the two Koreas? I think unification is a long way off yet. But um, what we are seeing, of course, is the start of a process of 
in a quite intensive way of re-engagement. A lot of your viewers will have remembered from last year, it wasn't so long ago, that people internationally were really talking about the threat of a war on the peninsula, which would be a global war, which could even include uh, the use of nuclear weapons. That's not the case anymore. So we've already seen progress in terms of an intensification of engagement. Uh, unification is a long way off. There's a huge economic disparity between the North and South, huge cultural disparity. Uh, one's got the hangover from a, an old communist type of system in the North, although it's hardly communist anymore. It's, it's, it's ruled by the market economy and the economic level. And the other is an advanced capitalist country, which is one of the richest countries in the world, a member of the OECD. Uh, nevertheless, there is a strong feeling, as President Moon pointed out in your clip, of a Korean national identity. It's not just the same language, but the same founding myths, the same sense of history, which does go back, as far as both Koreas are concerned, for 5,000 years. Uh, they were a united political community across the whole peninsula for at least five or 600 years, and that's a very real sense in, by both Koreas. So there is a, a foundation to build on, uh, and it looks like at the moment things are, okay, are progressing. So can, can I just briefly ask you about how far this paves the way for renewed talks between Kim and Trump and whether you see the momentum uh, continuing there with uh, talks over denuclearization? Well, that's a difficult issue. There's no doubt that President Trump wants to see this as his major foreign policy achievement, perhaps even get the Nobel Prize if there is a peace agreement. Uh, that US, the U.S. will sign up for. But there are huge divisions within the U United States administration. Mike Pompeo is on track with wanting to uh, do something with the North Koreans, but John Bolton, who is the national security advisor uh, to the United States President, President Trump, um, has always been very sceptical of, of North Korea, has never shown in the past that he, he's interested in any form of negotiated deal with North Korea. And at the moment, he has the ear of the president. So these tensions within the United States administration have, have yet to play out in terms of what's going to happen. Will the United States say, yes, we will go for a treaty, irrespective of some of the problems which will no doubt come up? Or will John Bolton uh, say, well, no, we don't trust the North Koreans. There's no way we're going to go forward with that. Everything that they're saying is, uh, is not to be trusted, and therefore the United States will not uh, uh, arrange a deal. That's still playing out, and we don't know. Hazel, great to get your analysis there. Thank you very much indeed for that. Professor Hazel Smith there. Well, President Trump is in North Carolina to survey Hurricane Florence recovery efforts. Simon Marks has been following his visit from Washington, D.C. He says while the storm is over, the Carolinas aren't yet safe from the aftermath. The immediate threat from Hurricane Florence, by the way, is not completely over. There's one particular river in Fayetteville, uh, the Cape Fear River, that is expected to crest at four times its normal height over the course of the next few hours. At least 12,000 people facing uh, the prospect of evacuation there as the Carolinas continue uh, to try and recover from this storm. President Trump said that planning beyond belief had gone into uh, preparations made by emergency services and first responders. It was really something special, he told uh, the uh, officials that gathered to meet him uh, in the Carolinas. Money is going to come as fast as you need it, he said. America grieves with you. Uh, America's hearts break for you. We will never leave your side. So that's quite an open-ended pledge uh, of support that Donald Trump is making to those Americans who got caught up uh, in this terrible historic uh, rain-making storm that left at least 35 people uh, dead and still poses a threat to life.